No one can say with certainty when and how the lawn trade began. Like water running over rocks, it seems there has always been a continuous trade of lawns. To most people, including educated people, the word lawn boat has held, until now, no meaning. Perhaps little is known about lawn boats because there has yet to be the Herman Melville of the lawn trade. The Lawn Boat Historical Society promotes its website, lawnboats.com, and is the major supporter of this documentary, the purpose of which is to share the Lawn Boat Chronicles beyond academic circles. The Society also conducts research into the lawns for Iliahi or Santalum Fresinatianum. The Lawn Boat Historical Society is the repository and clearinghouse of all known illustrations, stories, and films of the great lawn boat narrative. In the Naturhistorisches Museum Wien, there's an aquarium-sized diorama of the first profitable lawn delivery to the Arctic Circle. Just one floor above the lawn boat is the Venus von Willendorf. Her abundant body has been poetically described as a lawn boat resting at sea. It is said that at the time there were more than 555 lawn boats at sea. Care and feeding of the lawn boat's crew became difficult with lawns being so lucrative. No room was allotted to vegetables. Many lawn boatsmen perished at sea due to nutrition deficiencies. At the turn of the 19th century, the most isolated group of islands in the world began a 30-year phenomenal sandalwood for lawn trade. This is widely recognized by scholars as the velvet and silk age of the lawn boats. Historians translating captain's logs found Hawaii nicknamed the Sandalwood Mountains in honor of its great endemic resources for export and burning. The Hawaiian word for sandalwood, iliahi, should not be confused with Ilamini in La Paz, Bolivia. Historically, Bolivia has not traded its gold for lawns, mostly due to its landlocked status. In one of the largest discoveries to date, journals kept by lawn boatsmen provide accounts of the lawn trade. A field researcher located this rare footage of what appears to be Kailua Bay. This film has put to rest skepticisms on the breadth and coverage of the lawn boat trade. Lawn boat expeditions to the Arctic began in earnest when the boats could withstand the ice islands that thwarted early delivery attempts. It is theorized that the first attempts were limited to small squares in skin-covered kayaks. Archaeologists have been unable to locate their remains. Today, longboat voyages to the Arctic and more recently to the moon are commonplace as technology 
to transport and maintain the lawns is both readily available and affordable. In his treatise of 1832, prominent scholar Solomon of Hebrewborn proposed that the references to the burning bush were in fact derived from a string of translation errors. He noted that the word for bush is similar to grass stacked neatly for travel and was most likely an early term for lawns ready for shipment. This then suggests that the spontaneous burning bush may, in fact, have been a stack of lawns. It is still not clear if the burning impacted the lawn boat's commerce in a negative sign of God or positive sign of God way. Records of early lawn trading appear in important historical texts. Homer's poetry and later Herodotus' histories cover the lawn boat trade. In the great book of the Christian faith, the Bible, Corinthians 11.25, Paul writes of tragic shipwrecks where many lawns were lost. He says he spent night and day in the deep while on these voyages. The lawn boats are unfortunately also responsible for the spread of a rare alien insect, the Platodea brae grandis sonorus. The decibel level of this invasive two foot long insect has replaced bird calls, human speech, and other sound of nature with its loud and long mating call. Thomas Jefferson, the American revolutionary, embraced the great waste that is the lawn in his landscape design in 1768 for Monticello. One expert hypothesized that Betsy Ross's stars and stripes actually represented lawns and roads. The stars were first designed as squares but later changed. This theory has been discredited but the value of the suburban lawn has continued as a symbol of success, manhood, and dominance, uninterrupted through recessions, political shifts, poisoned waterways, and rising tides. Financial support notwithstanding, future episodes will cover primary trade routes and how the lawn trade enabled the development of container shipping.